Well, hello everybody and happy Easter to everybody. So glad you're watching today. Happy Easter. Yes, these are my girls. So this is Bethany, who's 14, and Ariana, who's 10. And they decided to pop in to say good morning to you. So ladies, a little bit here, you're gonna come back and you can hop in and I'll ask you a few questions. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Sharon. Thanks for watching. Hello, family members, probably my mom and a few others too. Awesome. Thanks for watching. Hi, Carrie. So ladies, you can head on back and I'll come get you here shortly. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Taya. Good morning, everybody. Happy Easter. It's a pleasure to see you today. And I uh, can't wait. I mean, this is a little bit of a different Easter for us because here we are together and it's awesome in that sense that we can be on together online. Hello, everybody. Hi, Russ. Hi, Amber. Hi, Pastor Ralph. And uh, even though it's a little bit different, it's okay. We're thankful that we could be on with you, that we could enjoy this time together. It's a unique Easter. In fact, this morning I got a little text message and somebody said, Happy Unique Easter. Love that. It is a unique Easter. But at least we can be on together and do this together. So we're thankful for that. I wonder what you're wearing today. Probably most of you are in pajamas, but normally on Easter, I get to see your Easter attire, right? So, you know, whether you're wearing pastels and greens and yellows and blues. Hi, Sandy. Glad to see you here. Hi, Lori. And so thankful for you guys being on today. So we can't see you in your pastel colors, right? Because most of you are probably still in your pajamas. And I wonder what your plans are today. I wonder what you're up to today for Easter. I wonder what your planning on doing and uh, what you're going to do with your family, probably just the family members that you're with because of the quarantine. One of the things I'm going to miss is the Easter egg hunts, right? And probably if your kids are watching right now, you guys are watching, it's like, man, I miss the Easter egg hunts. I wish I could be a part of an Easter egg hunt, right? Um, and the public Easter egg hunts are just awesome. But maybe you'll have one at home instead. And uh, if that's the case, that's awesome. So, um, I wanted to share with you a little while back, my mother and I, we went and we saw this tomb in Israel. And uh, we're not sure, certain that it's the tomb of Jesus, but we do know that this could be one of the tombs that was in the area where Jesus uh, raised up from the dead. And it could have looked like this. And you'll see right down below here that there's a little um, edge where the stone would have rolled across the top of this uh, opening like this, and then it would have rolled away. And the really cool thing is I went inside here, and what I love about this is just thinking about what Mary and the other Mary and these ladies, when they went down to the tomb, what was happening for them. So just to recapture that very morning, this very morning for them, they're walking down because they're going to prepare the body for um, with the spices because it probably would have been the smell would have been a little atrocious so they would have brought this the, the, the spices down to prepare the body and as they were doing so they got up to the tomb and i'm sure they were anticipating hey listen the stone's going to be on the tomb how are we going to get in what are we going to do and lo and behold they look upon the tomb and what do they see they see it open right it's like whoa wait a minute wow the tomb is open Oh, no, is probably their next thought, right, everybody? Because their thought is, hey, listen, did somebody take the body? Why is the tomb open? It shouldn't be open. And then what's really cool is they check inside. They don't see anybody inside. And then afterwards, they come out, and there are two men standing there, and they remind them, hey, listen, don't look for the living among the dead because Jesus is risen, Right? And I love that because it demonstrates, this open tomb demonstrates that there's new life, right? It's not closed. It's wide open, which means that there's new life. There's a new opening that God has reigned, that he has opened up the grave, which is awesome, right? Let's give some likes and some loves on that. I love it when you guys do that, by the way, with the likes and with the hearts, right? Because we're excited because this tomb is no longer empty, right? Isn't that cool? Awesome. Love to see that. Very good. We're thankful for that today. So let's try this together. Ready? I'm going to say he is risen. And you at home, maybe you're watching with your spouse, maybe you're watching with your kids. I want you to say he is risen indeed. You ready? Here we go. He has risen. Awesome. Very good. Thank you for doing that. Really cool. Well, we appreciate you watching today. And Easter does look a little different this year. And so, unfortunately, I can't give you a fist pump. But if you want to give me a fist pump right now, we can do that. Or some of you, I'd give you a hug, right? 
uh, just happy Easter to you. We're so glad you're here. Now, a couple of things before I share this morning, my message, a couple of things for humor, because I like to share my humor once in a while, is this. Why are my annoying servants staying in my home all day now, right? Why are my annoying, the annoying servants staying in my home all day now? <laughs> yeah, I think you're probably your cats or your dogs are probably feeling this right now. Like, wait a minute, what's my servant doing here? You shouldn't be here. You should be at home right now. Or how about this? Because I think we can all relate to this at some level, right? Now that we have everyone washing their hands correctly, next week, turn signals, right? Uh, how many of you struggle with the turn signals thing? Like, listen, let's get their turn signals right. Everybody's washing their hands. Now let's work on the turn signals. Because I don't know about you, I would like for people to work on this especially, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, hello, everybody. Thanks for watching. Hi, Harvest. Hi, Jen. Hi, Hope. Hi, Rob. Good morning, everybody. Sorry I couldn't get to all of you. Hi, Lori. Great to have you all watching. So today, what I want to do is I want to share with you something that I think is really um, profound and important. And that is, is that for many of you as, at home as you're watching this, maybe you've been following God for quite some time, but do you have some questions in your mind where you're like, you know what, I believe in God, but, and you have this kind of lingering question, right? And you maybe you're like in a place where like, listen, I believe in Easter, you know, I know it's not just about the Easter bunny and it's not just about eggs, although those are awesome things, right? And if you're a kid and you're watching this morning, you're like, man, thank you so much for the Easter bunny. Thank you for the eggs. But you realize, hey, listen, okay, I believe that there's a God, quite possibly. Most people in America do still believe in that. And so it's like, listen, but I have a but. There's a but here. I believe in Easter, but I have got a reservation, you know? Or even if you've been following God for a while, and you're kind of like, well, I believe in him and I've been following him, but I still have some questions that don't seem to have answers. And I want to have more answers, right? I, I want to be to a place where I'm more comfortable in my faith, or I wish God would just come down and he would give me the answer to this question, right? Some of you are like, listen, if I could ask God one question, God, why did you blank? You're probably like, well, what, what is that, right? And you can write that down right now in your comment section. Section Michelle Archer is taking care of that this morning. So if you've got a comment, just write down a comment in your section, whether you're watching on YouTube or while you're watching on Facebook Live. We're trying to do both here this morning. So, but you're, maybe you're in that place where you have a number of buts when it comes to your belief in God. But you've come to the right place because I want to talk about that today. In fact, I'm starting this series today. I want to believe God, but... I want to believe in God, but, and then you have some reservations. So I want to tackle four different things starting today. Hey, listen, starting with Easter. Hey, listen, God, I believe, right? I think Easter is really important. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching, right? But I believe that. I believe that God's done something spectacular. But, hey, listen, God, there's something here that's really preventing me, that's kind of, get a, kind of stopping me from going much further. And in fact, maybe you have some hesitancy, maybe you have some reservation right now, or maybe you, you have a strong faith in God, but you're in a place like, ah, I just wish I had the answer to this, whatever that might be. So we're going to start this series, I want to believe in God, but. But before we do, I want to kind of bring this up because I think this is important. There are three things we're going to talk about next week, uh, next three weeks, and then I'll talk to you about what we're going to talk about today. And each one of these, there's something about, well, I believe in God, but I have a reservation. Next week, we're going to talk about, I believe in God, but why don't I feel him, right? Ever thought that? Why don't I feel him? In other words, I'm going to talk about the goosebump God, right? We want to feel God. We want to know that God is real. We want to know God is moving and, and, and active. I believe in God, but I can't see him, right? I can't hear him. I want to hear him. I want to feel him right? And the week after, we're going to talk about the heartless God. So maybe that can resonate with you. I love to believe in God, but have you seen all the horrible things that are going on, right? This whole COVID-19 thing, right? We're in quarantine. Hey, listen, God, why? It seems kind of heartless that some people are dying right now. That's not okay, right? You've thought that. You know, even though it's Easter, let's, let's be honest, this Easter, it's happy, 
But you know, some reservations because it's like, listen, we're still in a quarantine. This is a whole different Easter. Many of you have been alive right now. You've never seen anything like this whatsoever. So I believe in God. But you know what? God, sometimes you appear like you're not very loving. Hi, Don. Hi, Larry. Hi, Gwen. Hi, Andrew. And so maybe that's you today. And so in third week, we'll talk about that. And last week, we're going to talk about the killjoy God. I'd love to believe in God, but I'm not following all those rules. You ever thought that? Yeah, why in the world do I have to follow the rules? I want to have fun. So why would I want to invest in a God who's not going to allow me to have some fun? That's for week four. But today, before I introduce you to the main theme, I want to have a little bit of fun with you. Can we have a little bit of fun? How about, how about some fun today? Everybody watching, how about some thumbs up and some hearts? Let's have a little bit of fun. We're going to test your knowledge for just a second. So, now if you are watching and you were born, there's some hearts, there's some loves. All right, awesome. If you're watching right now and you're born before 1990, you'll be able to connect with what I'm saying, okay? But if you're born after 1990, I just ask that you watch, you pay attention, and you see how people respond here because I think it'll be interesting. So, here's some questions. Here we go. So, I want to go back and talk about some television shows. So, give me some love if you remember these. You ready? How many of you remember the love boat? Remember the love boat? Right? Just give me some flags if you remember the love boat, right? The love boat. In fact, I could probably sing you part of the song, although you don't want me to, and those in my church, they know that I'm not a really good singer, right? But the love boat, right? So you remember the love boat. How about Happy Days? Remember Happy Days? And Happy Days has got a great song too, right? You know, especially when the fawns would come in, and he wears his leather jacket, and hey, hey, hey. You know, I can't really mimic it well, but that's, you kind of come in, command the room. You remember the fawns? Or how about um, Laverne and Shirley? Remember Laverne and Shirley, right? Thumbs up to that, some hearts on that. Or how about the two shows that went really well together like no other? The Six Million Dollar Man and The Bionic Woman. Remember those shows? I will see all the hearts and the likes. That's really cool. Thank you for doing that. So you remember those shows? Lee Majors and Lindsay Wagner. I mean, come on. What a great combination, right? Um, or how about this one? Some of you, I'll show this to you, and you'll be like, oh, yeah, I remember. How about this? Remember Dallas? Yeah, remember Dallas? Yeah, I remember Dallas because what happened for me was when I was younger, I used to watch the Dukes of Hazard, and then what I would do is my parents would send me to bed. I think this is on Friday nights, and you know what I would do, everybody? Yeah, you probably did what some of you did because you remember this, too. You were, maybe you were my age, and you snuck down the stairs, and you peeked out, and I watched Dallas behind the stairs, Sometimes my parents were aware of that. Some of them, they weren't aware of it. But I would just watch it when I was a kid, right? So some of you remember Dallas. Now, let me just ask you, would you put down in the comment section, what's your favorite television show? Just put me down in, your, in the comment section, you know, just tell us what your favorite television show of the 70s was, of the 80s, of the 90s. We want to make this interactive. So just throw down in the comment section what you like for your television show. Be happy to see that. Also, if you're watching today and you are one of our church members or regular attenders, would you just let us know, hey, listen, I'm watching with my spouse. That helps us uh, as we're keeping record. So that would be helpful. So tell us what your favorite television show is. And right now, take a moment and tell us if you're a regular attender, just say with your name and your spouse is watching. Cool. So while you're doing that, here's why I bring this up. Because it used to be that we could watch only one episode of a show at a time, right? Yeah. What do we do now? We binge watch. I wonder how many of you are binge watching right now in your quarantine time. I bet you most of you are. Now, my wife and I are watching a show called Merlin. Have you ever heard of Merlin? Now, Merlin, I think, ended back in 2013. Love Merlin. And uh, so we're in season three. We've been watching a show pretty much every day. And so we're binge watching. Pretty much, we have at our access in 2020 any show that we want on demand, right? We cannot just watch one show. We can watch multiple shows, three shows. We can watch multiple seasons if we want to, provided that they're out, right? And so we do that. But it used to be, you remember, you can only watch one show and you had to wait a whole week for that show to come on. Not anymore. We have an on-demand sort of society that we live in. Now, it's an interest that we have an on-demand society and we want an on-demand God. 
right? We have an on-demand society, and so therefore, it, it sinks into our minds, it kind of trickles into our psyche, that we should have an on-demand God. A God who is willing to meet our every single need, and so that when we lift up a prayer concern, like we would love this to happen, wouldn't we? We would love this to happen. Hi, Michael. Hi, Tina. Hi, Bruce. Hi, Rob. We would love for it. So that if God, we answer up a prayer, and we offer up a prayer that God would just respond immediately and say, listen, I'm going to take care of that for you. Right? That's what you would love to have. God, I have this concern. Right? Maybe I have, Lord, I have this coronavirus. Lord, I have cancer. Lord, you know what? I have a concern for my teenager. I've got a concern for my child. Right? Lord, just take care of it right now. That's what we want. And I don't blame you, but we're in that place where we're accustomed to that. But let me just say this so that we're all very clear on this. The on-demand God does not exist. The on-demand God does not exist. Darn it, right? Come on. Oh, you kind of like, oh, I wish it was, right? Yeah, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but it's true. There's an on-demand God does not exist. It's not something that you and I can experience now once in a while god will respond when we lift up our, our our hearts to him right and he has there's something that's pressing he'll say okay listen i'm going to take care of that because i see your heart and i want to respond to that because i love you deeply but there are other times where god does not right and we don't understand why and we don't get it but here's what we know if we've lived here on this earth long enough we realize that god does not answer all our demands now, a very common thought that I hear oftentimes as a pastor is this. I see all the little tears in your eyes. I love that when you do those emotions. That's, that's really cool. But a common thought that I hear as a pastor is this. People will say to me, I believe in God, but I pray that he would get rid of my depression. And it didn't happen. So I can't believe God. Or I believe in God, um, but I pray that he would save my marriage, and he hasn't pray, saved my marriage. So therefore, I have a hard time believing in God. You know, I pray for God to provide for me financially, but man, it doesn't seem like that. So I'm not sure I can believe in this God. Yeah, those are tough things. Some of you are going through that right now, right? But we exist to serve him. We exist to serve him. Not he exists to serve us. We exist to serve him. He doesn't, it's not like he's up there and he's some sort of puppet in the sky or he's some sort of celestial sugar daddy, darn it, right? It's not like he's some cosmic genie in the sky where we, we rub his lamp three times and he responds. Or like, you know, he's like this cosmic, you know, soda machine that if we put in our tithe and all of a sudden out comes the, the desired soda that we want, that's not how it works, right? We exist to serve him. Would you just say that with me? Let's say this to everybody watching. If you wouldn't mind just jumping in, love the hearts and love the likes. We exist to serve him. Yeah, thank you. We exist to serve him. So now that we've established that, some of you would say, well, then what's his role? Right? What is his role? Who is he? If he's not exactly the on-demand God that I want, then who is he? Well, that's a great question. I want to talk about three qualities with you today of the heart of God. So if you're taking notes, if you just want to jot these down, you can. You don't have to. You're just watching because you want to watch. You can always go back and watch the video later, right? Cool. Three qualities that I want to share with you that's about this God, okay? So first of all, here's really good news about this God. This God, he's loving. He's a loving God, right? He's a loving God. How about some thumbs up and some likes for that if you can resonate with that, if you experience that over the course of your lifetime, right? His heart is always loving. Now, I see those. That's awesome. Now, one of the things that I know for you, those of your parents, first of all, there's never a time where you don't love your kids, right? You always love your kids. Your kids, you love them unconditionally. Most parents do, right? We love our kids unconditionally, whether they do wrong or whether they do right. We have this unconditional love for them. Now, you don't always like them, right? Can we be honest with each other? I've got five kids. Love them to death. But sometimes the like heart part is kind of hard, right? Based upon what they do, sometimes it's hard. You always love them. Sometimes the like, you know, especially when they're being rebellious. That's a tough one. So we know that you love them all the time, but you don't always like them all the time. 
The other thing that I know is this, is that when they do something that you don't want them to, or that's not in their very best interests, here's what I know about you. You come alongside and love them regardless, but you also want to make sure that you guide them in the right direction. So even though you're loving, I bet you many of you do not give them exactly what they want when they want, right? I mean, some of you might do that. But if you do that, you can spoil them. So what do you do instead? Well, you decide, hey, listen, I love you, but, okay, you asked me now three times to bring you lunch at school, and guess what? I'm sorry, I did it the first two times. This third time, it's on you. I'm not bringing lunch because I want to teach you a lesson, right? I want to teach you a lesson that is, hey, listen, you've got to remember, there's some, there's some tough love out there. We've got to teach our kids to be responsible, right? So I know that about you. And God works the same way. He always loves us, unconditionally loves us. However, what we want and what God deems as best can be two different things, right? They just may not match up because God knows certain things that we don't know, just like parents know certain things that kids don't know. Now, in Romans chapter 8, I want to read you a passage that's really powerful. And verse 35 says this, Who shall separate, Paul's writing this, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ, the love of God? Who shall separate us? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword, right? Now, let me just say, if you wake up this morning and, you know, you're naked with a sword in your face, I'm sorry, right? I mean... That, that's just probably not my reality. It is not your reality. Now, um, that being said, what Paul's talking about here is this. What shall separate us from the love of God? Shall unemployment? No. Shall financial trouble? No. Shall relational breakdown separate us from God? No, right? Shall cancer? No. COVID-19? No. Depression? No. None of these things separate us from the love of God, no matter what they look like. He says this, For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. God's heart is always loving Right? Let's, let's just give some thumbs up for that, right? Give some hearts for that. If that's been your experience, awesome. And if that's not been your experience and you're kind of, kind of walking through that, that's okay too. I see those hearts, see those likes. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Vincent. Hi, Tina. And so God's heart, number one, is always loving. Number two, we know this. His ways are always higher than ours, right? His ways are always higher than our ways. So the first thing that we know about God is that he's always loving. I see those hearts, see those likes, awesome. The second thing we know is this, that God's ways are higher than our ways. They always are. You know, sometimes this will happen to me as a pastor. Somebody will come up to me and they'll say, hey, Jeff, why did this happen? Like I had a little while back, a little somebody come up to me and said, Jeff, why did COVID-19 happen? Honestly, I don't have an idea. I don't have a clue. I don't have any answers for you. I just don't. Somebody said, well, you should probably know that because you're a pastor. You're closer to God. <laughs> Listen, he didn't tell me, right? I don't have a special connection here, right? I don't know. I'm not sure why it happened, other than the fact that it started somewhere by eating some things that just weren't sanitized and weren't, weren't clean. That's all I know. I don't know anything that's larger in terms of the picture. I don't know why God's allowing this. I certainly know God didn't want to cause this, and this wasn't something he wanted, but I don't have answers, right? And you don't have answers either. And that's the case with God. Lots of times we just don't have answers. Why is a child born handicapped? I don't know. I don't like it either. I'm not sure. Why, there, why is a person who's in their midlife and has so much going for them is struck down and they die? I don't know. I don't have an answer. Why does a little boy or a little girl come into a place where they, they come down with a disease or they come down with something and they end up dying? I don't know. I'm not sure. I wish I had answers for that. I've got no explanation whatsoever. 
I don't understand. I wouldn't even want to attempt to explain or describe that. But what I do know is this. In Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9, when God, what God says is this. For my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Uh, excuse me, it says this. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. And he goes on. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. I hold comfort in knowing that there's a God who's wiser than I am, who's already in tomorrow. Time doesn't hold him. He knows all of what's going on. But I know this much, that some of you are in a dark place and you're in a dark valley and you don't know why you're going through it and you don't have answers, but I promise you that for many of us, when we get to the other side, we'll be able to look back and we'll say, wow, I didn't really know at the time how important that was to walk through that valley, which is not to say that God wanted the valley, but it is to say as I look back, I can see now that I've learned something in the process that God wanted to teach me something in the process. And so therefore, as I look back, I can see things differently. I can see things a little bit more clearly now. And some of you can resonate with that because you've gone through that, right? Some of you are like, yeah, I get that, right? So thumbs up to that. I understand that because I've been in some spots and I look back and I'm like, wow, God's way was higher than my way. I thought my way was the best, but God's way was even better. Now, um, hi, Brenda, hi, Larry. I'm Michelle. Awesome. So a little while back, right, um, I had these pair of jeans here. Yep. So I'm about to show you a pair of jeans. And I bought these pair of jeans probably, oh, uh, probably a good five years ago. And I thought, wow, I like these jeans. I tried them on, wore them for a while. I thought, this, these are good jeans, right? Uh, they're American Eagle, in case you're curious, right? I'm not going to show you the size. That, that's a private thing. But that being said, I bought these jeans, wore them for a period of time. And I thought, okay, these are good jeans, right? But I don't know about you, because I move around a lot, and especially for me, when I'm you know, driving school bus and what have you, I wanna have a little bit of breathing room in my jeans. So I thought, you know what, these aren't as comfortable as I thought. And then I found these jeans. And here's what's really cool about these jeans, right? Here's what's really cool. They stretch. I know, it's like, listen, you, got, you have this little bit of stretch in your jeans? I do, because I'm constantly moving. I like to have a little bit of cushion in my jeans, right? I just do. And some of you are like, hey, man, why? I, I'm sharing this. I'll tell you the purpose in a moment. But these jeans are so comfortable, I could wear them all the time. And they come in different, fit, you know, different fits. They come in different styles. They come in different colors, right? And so these jeans are much more preferable to the other jeans that I have. So, in fact, I don't even wear these jeans anymore. I wear these jeans. And here's my point with saying this, right? It's because this was what I thought was what was best for me, right? I saw these, I see other people wearing these, right? My sons wear these jeans, they love these jeans. But then I tried these jeans on and I thought, wow, I didn't even realize what was missing. I didn't even know what I was missing in the process. And so what I've come to discover is these jeans are a lot like my ways. I think I know what's best and I try it on for a little bit and maybe it's okay, or maybe I come to discover, you know what, it's not what I thought it was. And then I try on these, and man, what a difference. And these are what God's ways are. And it's like, wow, God knows me. He knows what's best for me. He knows what fits me best. He created me, he made me. Therefore, you know what? Why would I want to go to these genes? when I could wear these, right? There's a big difference. God's ways are higher than our ways, right? God's ways are higher than our ways. So, hi, Scott. Hi, Kate. Glad you're watching today. So, God's ways are higher than ours. There is no on-demand God. So, the, the third thing we know is, first of all, we know that God's loving, right? That's what we said. Second thing we know is that God's ways are higher than ours because we're looking for an on-demand God, but there isn't one. He doesn't exist, but there's a God who's loving. There's a God whose ways are higher than ours. And then this, God's presence is always enough, right? God's presence is always enough. His presence is. There comes a time 
And whether you've been following Jesus or not, let me just make you a promise that you're going to discover, hey, listen, you're going to look and you're going to say, I don't know why this is happening to me. I don't really get this. And I'm not really sure I want this. But man, this is rough. And hey, I need something powerful in my life. I need some strength in my life. And that was the position that King David was. So King David in the Old Testament, um, he went through a really rough time. King David had, the, had this intimacy with God, and he was strong in his relationship with God. But things weren't easy for him. You would think, okay, because he's a king, everything must be easy for David. It wasn't. He had a rough life. King David went through this time where he cried out to God. In fact, he wrote the book we call the Psalms, right? He wrote these Psalms, and here's what he said. Basically, I'm going to paraphrase. Why are you allowing this, God? Why am I on the run? Where are you, God? Does that sound like somebody who has it easy? No. Why are you letting your enemies do this to me? This doesn't seem fair, God, right? But as he grew in his faithfulness to God, he wrote Psalm 23. And some of you are like, yeah, I know Psalm 23. Psalm 23 is powerful. You know what? Some of you have seen this at funerals. Some of you want this perhaps read at your funeral. But I love this passage. And remember, David wrote this because he knew what it was like. He wrote this. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, or even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Awesome. I will fear no evil. Why? Remember why? Because you're with me. Yeah. Because you're with me. <laughs> I won't fear. Even though I'm in the darkest valley of my life, maybe some of you are right now. Maybe some of you are unemployed. Maybe you're walking through and you're, you're struggling with something with your teenager. Maybe you've just gone through a loss. I don't know where you're at. But man, you're in a valley. And it's painful and it's caused tears for you. Right? Listen. You've got to know this. Even though your God is not an on-demand God, you're a God he, he's a God who's always present. He's always with you in the middle of the valley. No matter how hard it is, no matter how deep that valley is, right? He's always with you. Hi, Charlene. Hi, Lynn. He's always with you. I think probably for some of us, we are in that place. And we wonder, God, where are you? But just know today that he is a God who's always present with us. I want you to remember today that we don't serve an on-demand God. That's not who he is. He's not a God who's just going to come down. He's going to answer our prayer request just like that. I wish. Now, sometimes he does that. Sometimes he'll do that, right? Sometimes he'll do that, which is awesome. But there are many times where God does not respond to a snap of the fingers. But... There are three things I want you to remember today on this Easter. I want you to take these with you. Let them sink into your psyche. Number one, even though we don't have an on-demand God, we have a God that's loving. That nothing can separate us from his love at all, right? Nothing, not death, not the COVID-19, not um, cancer. Now, anything you're experiencing can separate you from God's love. Isn't that cool? Yeah, I see the hearts and the thumbs up, right? That's, that's really cool. Thank you. And secondly, I want you to know this. So God is loving. Secondly, God's ways are higher than our ways. Just like a parent has a higher way than a child does because they know more, the same thing is true for God and for us. And there are many of you who are watching right now, and you get that because you've gone through a valley, and you're looking back, and you're like, man, God knew better than I did. Right? I see your hearts and your thumbs up. Really cool. The third thing I want you to remember, that God's always present. He's always present. I know right now is hard. It's hard on my family. It's hard on your family. It's hard on every person probably who's watching. This is not an easy time. But I want you to know something. God promises us no matter what the valley is, he's always present. He is always walking beside us. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? I think that's one of the best news we could possibly have. And so I want to pray for us. I'm going to take a moment to pray for us. And then here shortly, I'm going to bring the girls back in. And they're just going to give their Easter greetings because I want you to be able to see them. And so, and kids, we value you. This is not just for kids watching today. I mean, for our parents watching today. It's also for kids. And, man, you're a big deal when it comes to Easter. So we appreciate you. Hi, Jason. Let's go ahead and pray, shall we? Hi, Shirley. 
So let's go ahead and pray, and then uh, I'll send these girls back in momentarily. Father God, we thank you today that you are a God who is not on demand. I mean, yes, there are times where you grant something in the moment, like your forgiveness. You're always in a place where you're forgiving. You're a forgiving God. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you that any time we can call on your forgiveness because we, when we sin, which is for all of us quite frequently, that, Lord, we can just call and say, Lord, would you forgive me for that? Thank you that that's one area that we can call on you repeatedly. But, Lord, many and many th times you don't respond as fast as you, we want you to. So I pray, Lord, today that you'll help us. I pray, Father, right now that even though you're not an on-demand God, we have real needs, right? We have real needs. One of them, Lord, is I pray for marriages today, God. I pray for miracles and marriages that you'll help people. I pray that for miracles for those who are over, trying to overcome depression, and it's hard right now. This is not easy. They're on their meds, right, Lord? But still, it's difficult because it's triggering all sorts of things. Lord, I pray for physical healing for people. People with the COVID-19, I pray for physical healing for them. I pray for financial blessings for those who are struggling in their relation, struggling financially, and they're, maybe they're waiting for a surplus check, or maybe they're not eligible for one, Lord, and maybe there's a struggle there. You know what's going on. Maybe they're on unemployment and they're still waiting for their checks. Father, I pray for you to step in and move in mightily in these families. Lord, we thank you that you are a God who loves us deeply. You are a God whose ways are higher than our ways. And you are a God whose presence is guaranteed with us 100% of the time, no matter what we're going through, no matter what the valley looks like. We thank you, Father. We pray this in Christ's name. And together we say, Amen. Awesome. So before I bring the girls in, um, for those of you who are just tuning in today and your guests, um, if you want, you can tune this next part out because this is for my church family. Um, so let me just share something briefly with my church and for those who might be regular attenders, and then I'll bring the girls in. So if you want to tune this out, you can. I want to say thank you for your gifts at this time. I really do. I want to, my, our church has been so generous over this time. I thank you. I know some of you are out of work. I know some of you have been struggling, but yet you've been faithful. Thank you so much. Thank you for what you're doing with that. I know times are tough. If you're able today, if you're able to give, if you're able to respond in whatever way you possibly can, great. And here's what you can do. You can do two ways, right? You can text the word GIVE to this following number, 315-871-0989, and just follow the prompts. This is what I do. So when I hop off, that's what I do. I just I text this. And I'm done. It's really neat. It's really fast. It's easy to do that. And the last thing is you can hop online too, right? We have online. You can online giving option. And you can go to CandlestoneChurchOfTheNazarene.com. And you can click up on the right corner. And uh, you can go ahead and follow the prompts there. That's the other option you can do. Or if you want, you can just mail it into our pres to our building here. That's awesome. Some of you have been doing that. Again, thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you so much for your faithfulness. We appreciate it. And we're glad that we're able to reach out and to impact people and touch people. Um, so uh, I'm going to call on the girls. If you give me a second, I'll be right back. I'm going to go knock on the wall here. In the meantime, take a moment and share this with somebody else. You know, you can share this message so other people can see it. That's one of the best ways to get this message out. Take a moment and share it with people. Um, I appreciate that. So let me grab the kids here, and I'll be right back. All right? Come on down. All right, they're coming. Last time we had trouble because they weren't readily available. All right, come on in, ladies. Pull up a chair. Now, they're a little closer than six feet beside me, but they've been with me for the last couple of weeks, just so you're aware of that, okay? So these are my ladies. This is Bethany. This is Ariana. Hop on in. Say hi, everybody. You are actually, you're officially live. I'll tell you what, I don't know if we can see you quite as well up there on YouTube live, so I'll just stand up a little bit. So let me ask you a couple questions. Are you excited about Easter? Yeah. Yeah? Why? Uh, because it was the day that Jesus rose from the dead. That's right. That's very good. So you, do you think you might actually have it home, like an Easter egg hunt or something? Mm -hmm. Really? I yeah. Hope. Or like you're making some eggs or something, you put some eggs, some decorate some eggs. Right? They're probably all saying hi. Everybody say hi to the ladies, right? Woo! -hoo -hoo. 
Awesome. I see your thumbs up on your hearts. Yes, they miss you too. So um, has this kind of been a different sort of time for you, being in quarantine? It's a different Easter, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Is it kind of hard? Yeah. Some of your parents are watching right now, and they're like, yeah, man, this is really hard. This is really difficult, you know? And some of you are going crazy with your kids. Have I been going crazy with both of you? Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's a tight tad, right? Yeah, absolutely. But I love you great, uh, deeply. I'd rather be in school. Yeah, Bethany's like, man, I want my friends. I want to see my friends, right? I want to go back to school. I get that, too. It's kind of hard to be in this time. But they're making it okay, right? You're doing good with it. Is there anything you want to say to people today? Anything you want to say? Um, I'll put you on the spot. How about Happy Easter? Happy Happy Easter, Easter, everybody. We love you. Thanks for watching today. Have an awesome day. Enjoy the time with your family. If you're eating ham today or if you're eating lasagna, whatever you're eating, enjoy it fully. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you later. Love all the likes and love all the hearts. You guys rock. Take care.